welcome to DC Today. One thing you might notice about today that might be a little bit different than yesterday, I am more nasally than normal. Uh, I feel like I haven't gotten sick my entire life, and then my son started preschool. So uh, you'll have to bear with me today. But markets were pretty plain today. Uh, we had pretty hot markets the last two days. Uh, I always like to say markets have a tendency to take two or three steps forward and one step backwards uh, as they calibrate and try to figure out prices. Markets were down today, so you had the Dow down uh, 98 points. That's down 32 basis points. S&P was down 66 basis points. NASDAQ down 85 basis points. Uh, the 10-year Treasury, interesting stat there. Again, above 4% at 4.13%. That's up 13 basis points and tapping on uh, rates we haven't seen in 15 years. Uh, same thing with the two-year. Top performing sector today, there was dispersion today. You had energy up 2.94%, while real estate was down 2.56%. Again, that's a high level of dispersion when your top sector is up nearly 3% and your bottom sector is nearly down uh, 3%. I will add that energy was the only positive sector on the day. Uh, again, as you might assume, crude oil was up $85.63 a barrel. That's up 3.39%. Uh, again, uh, like I said, markets two steps forward, one step backwards. Uh, earnings continue to be strong. We had some strong reports uh, these last few days. Uh, one thing that was catching a lot of attention of the news was, uh, as has become pretty normal these days, every Fed president uh, becomes famous. So the Minneapolis Fed president came out saying that the dot plot's not the barrier for them, that they would go above and beyond that to fight inflation. One thing I want to remind our listeners is uh, for a central bank, they are constantly trying to earn credibility. Over the last handful of years, the central bank has said things and not fall through with those things. And markets have kind of scoffed when they said they were going to do one thing. Uh, markets misbehaved, and then they backtracked. I think if you study the Bank of England right now and uh, the lack of clarity that they've been giving on what's happening, you can see why violent markets are from one way to the other. So uh, again, perhaps a little speculation on my point, but I think uh, a lot of the folks in the Fed right now are trying to prove credibility, and they're trying to flex a little bit to say, hey, markets, we just want you to know we will continue to fight inflation now. Uh, for me personally, I am questioning a little bit if uh, employment numbers start to get too soft, if they'll continue with that posture, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. So the other thing I found quite interesting, I don't know why I find this to be funny, but I do find it to be funny. Uh, Joe Biden came out today and said there was kind of a three-point plan he was going to do to fight gas prices. We talked about it yesterday, uh, taking from the reserves uh, to help with supply. Again, intentions to lower gas prices. Uh, he also had some pretty harsh words and criticisms towards oil companies, uh, saying that they should uh, forego uh, some of their profits and their activities of buybacks to uh, fight to lower gas prices. Uh, he made some connection points to say, hey, why are oil prices a lot lower and gas prices aren't? Now, there's a lot that goes into that comment uh, of how the whole refining process works and futures contracts and a lot of other factors that I don't think the president was taking into uh, as a factor today. But the part that I thought was funny is the first question from the media when he was done giving kind of this three-point plan was, hey, are you only doing this because midterms are coming up and you really want to market to folks uh, that you're in their corner and uh, you want to kind of help your political party? Obviously, he responded no quickly, but I think we'll see a lot of that o over the next couple weeks. Um, here's the reality. When people are going to vote, they are typically going to be somewhat self-centered. They're going to look at their own life and say, hey, do I feel like I have a lot of employment opportunity? And do I feel like I can afford the lifestyle I want to live? Another way of saying that, they're going to look at unemployment. They're going to look at inflation. Uh, gas prices is going to be a factor there. So again, if you're a politician, you are going to try to posture and push towards how you're an advocate to help people be fully employed and be able to live the lifestyle that they want to live. So again, if you go back and watch the interview, the questions were quite funny and his response because, uh, I don't know, we know the truth. So uh, another thing that I thought was interesting today, the Supreme Court uh, 
or it was brought to the Supreme Court to block uh, Biden's plan of relieving student loan debt. Now, we knew that was happening. The part that uh, I thought was interesting, I hadn't seen the statistics yet, but they ran a beta test. Uh, they started on Friday where they were allowing people to submit applications for the relief. And uh, over the weekend, drum roll, please. They got 8 million applications uh, in that first beta test. So um, it'll be interesting to see how well they can process all these things, as we've seen uh, a lot of the time when we um, try to go to the DMV or something of that nature. So uh, again, verdict's not out there. Uh, another thing that was uh, important for somebody who's a financial planner like myself, you saw all the updates on the 2023 taxes, uh, all the inflation adjustments. So the estate tax exclusion uh, goes up to nearly 13 million. I think it's 12.92 with the inflation adjustment. Uh, the gift tax exclusion, so what you can give on an annual basis, goes from 16,000 to 17,000. Why does that matter to you? Some of you might be contributing to 529 plans or something of that nature. Um, where you're trying to maximize how much you can give without uh, having to do a gift tax filing. So again, that'll be 17,000. For those super funding, again, you can take that 17,000, multiply it by five, and that's for you and your spouse uh, for college savings. Uh, for some of you that won't apply, but for some might be interesting. Uh, you can also go online and you can see all the new brackets that have been adjusted. Uh, again, the standard deduction will also go up. I think that number was 27700 for filing jointly on behalf of that first single filer. Uh, one, one piece of uh, news that I thought was interesting, or I, I guess this would be a comment from one commentator, is they said this is probably the most anticipated recession of all time. Uh, and I'll comment on that because you get a lot of headlines now saying, you know, the CEO of Goldman Sachs said this, or Jeff Bezos feels this. And I, I want us to remember that the stock market is a leading indicator when it comes to seeing kind of what the economic health is. So you've already seen the stock market pull back 25 to 30%, uh, which means that would be a leading indicator for something like a recession. But we have to remember that the way recessions are reported uh, through the National Bureau of Economic Research, they're in hindsight. So if they came out today and said, we are in a recession or we were in a recession, uh, that's not very helpful to you as an investor, because like I said, the stock market is a leading indicator. So I don't know if I would put a, a ton of value in uh, kind of the headlines of this famous person or that famous person feels uh, this particular way about where the economy is right now. Uh, I say that just to help calm your nerves a bit. Uh, here's one thing I also I found interesting. There was an LPL research where they showed that this year, if you look at positive returns on a daily basis for the market, there was only positive returns on a daily basis, 43.5% of the time. Uh, that is the worst, if you just hold that as a record, back through history since 1974. Because I'm curious, I went and I was like, man, I, I wonder how markets performed in 1975. Uh, over the last 50 years, 1975 was the second best year for markets. Again, markets tend to go two steps forward and one step backwards, two steps backwards and three steps forward. That's how markets work. It's uh, constantly calibrating. Uh, the big news that you'll find in the written today was you got uh, new housing starts and you got permits. What you'll find is on the building permits, the expectation was 1.5 million. It was 1.56. Uh, that means permits rose 1.4% in September. Uh, you may or may not find this interesting. New homes actually fell 3.1% and uh, apartment construction, uh, that was where the attribution was. It actually rose 8.2%. So there is people out there putting permits in to build new apartments. Uh, new housing starts, uh, the expectation was 1.47 million. Again, that expectation was lower than uh, what we've seen. Uh, so seasonally adjusted, that was uh, down 8.1% in September. A year over year, it's down 7.7%. Uh, again, on attribution, new homes fell 4.7% and apartments fell 13.1%. We talked about this on DC Today yesterday. Uh, folks are sitting on their hands. Uh, they want to see what markets are going to do. Uh, mortgage rates are really high. Uh, I, I think I read today that mortgage demand is the lowest level since uh, I think it was 1997. So again, that's not surprising to us when we see mortgage rates tapping on the door of six and 7%. Uh, we understand how that challenges affordability for a buyer. 
somebody's going to buy a million dollar home, the mortgage is a lot different at 3% than it is at 7%. Uh, there is also a high level of concern when people are talking about recession and inflation. Uh, it doesn't lead folks to have a high level of urgency to build new things or buy new things. So again, there's always two factors. There's the actual numbers and what's happening, uh, and it's the narrative that's birthed from that and the impacts it has on all of us from a sentiment perspective. Uh, I will note one thing that I, I really like that stood out today. Every Wednesday, David writes the weekly portfolio holdings report uh, that's published for all clients. So if you're a client, you're listening to this, you got this this morning. Uh, one of the little tidbits on there was one of our portfolio companies raised their dividend by 10%. And, and again, for a team that focuses on dividend growth, David Bonson wrote a book called The Case for Dividend Growth. I would encourage you to read it. Uh, again, it helps us because we're so maniacal on focusing on companies that have high free cash flow, management teams that want to share that free cash flow in the form of a dividend with investors. And, and we believe, and we would argue, that the best way to find the current value of a company is the net present value of their future cash flows. Now, again, it's hard to speculate the future, right? Uh, but who would have the most inside information? The management team. So if the management team is raising the dividend, they're kind of telling you uh, a, a foreshadowing of what they believe the health of the business is. So again, we always like to celebrate that when we have a portfolio company that raised their dividend. Again, double digits is significant. Uh, tomorrow, you'll get initial jobless claims. You'll get uh, the Fed Manufacturing Index, and you'll get existing home sales. I'll encourage you to go to the DC Today to read the Ask David section. Uh, again, I told you yesterday, I'm a huge fan of the Q&A part. Uh, it allows us to get to the real meat of what folks are interested in. Uh, David will be publishing his normal Dividend Cafe on Friday. He's still in New York uh, with our team doing their diligence trip uh, where they meet with all the managers. And again, he's going to uh, digest all the information that uh, he gets from these meetings. He's going to probably create it in some sort of deliverable. And then uh, whether it's as clients or something more freestanding, he'll deliver that, uh, his new learnings. But uh, you'll have me again tomorrow, so I'll be back to uh, provide you DC Today tomorrow, and I will sign out for tonight. <laughs>